So let's get right into it. A patient is diagnosed with a severe gram-negative rod infection. She is started on an unknown antibiotic. Three weeks later, she complains of generalized weakness, but no longer has any signs of infection. The following labs are obtained. Creatinine, 3.1. Hemoglobin, 11.9. White blood cells, 6.7. AST, 19. ALT, 22. Eosinophils are normal. Which of the following is the mechanism of the antibiotic that this patient was previously treated with? A. Inhibition of bacterial dihydrofolate reductase. B. Misreading of mRNA and inhibition of initiation complex. C. Inhibition of attachment of aminoacyl tRNA. D. Inhibition of 50S peptidyl transferase. Or E. Inhibition of protein synthesis via blocked translocation. So what I'd like you to do for a second, because it's never a good idea to just listen to someone read a question to you, is pause the video and read it yourself, go through the labs, and go through the answer choices. And then when you're ready, come back and unpause the video, and we'll start to break this question down. So clearly this question is hinting that this patient was treated with an antibiotic and then one of those antibiotics had an adverse drug reaction that's causing the symptoms in the vignette and maybe even some derangements in the metabolic profile or the labs that you're seeing printed for you. So this is going to require you to know the adverse drug reactions of the antibiotic and then translate that information into the mechanism of that same antibiotic. So this is a classic test question where you need to know one bit of information about a topic and then connect it to another bit of information in order to get the question right. So first, let's start by breaking down what you need to recognize in this question to pick up on which antibiotic they're hinting at. So the first thing that you'll notice is that in this scenario, the patient was treated for a gram-negative rod infection. So that's the first bit of information, because if you know what type of bugs each of these different antibiotics treat, then you'll be able to eliminate incorrect answers. The next thing that you'll notice is that the symptoms are generalized weakness that's given to you in the clinical vignette, and then you have to look through the labs and notice that this creatinine is actually very elevated, okay? So we see an elevated creatinine, but the other labs are normal. So eosinophils, they're telling you that it's normal. The AST and ALT on your test, you would open up the little thing on the screen that shows you the normal values for the labs, and you would notice that these are normal. The white blood cell count is normal, and the hemoglobin is, you know, it's like on the low end of normal, can, can be abnormal depending on patient demographics, but if you notice, there is no age of a patient given to you, so you couldn't even really figure out how off or how low normal is this hemoglobin. And in, as a general rule of thumb, if you're not given a patient's age, then chances are that a lab that you might otherwise think is borderline is really gonna be insignificant in the grand scheme of the question. So the only lab that you should have recognized as truly grossly abnormal that's relevant to the question at hand is the elevated creatinine. So in summary so far, if we're sort of jotting down on the right side of the screen what symptoms we're noticing between the vignette and the labs, we've got nephrotoxicity, right, because there's elevated creatinine, so we know that there's some degree of kidney damage here, and there's some type of neuromuscular symptom because the patient three weeks later is complaining of generalized weakness. So we've got a patient, unknown age, had a gram-negative rod infection, was started on some antibiotic, we don't know for how long, but then within the course of about three weeks, the labs show kidney damage and the vignette tells us there's some type of neuromuscular symptom. So we have an unknown antibiotic and then the question is, what was the mechanism of this antibiotic? So we need to connect these adverse drug reactions to the mechanism. So A, B, C, D, and E obviously all represent mechanisms of different antibiotics. And in order to get this question right, you have to have studied your antibiotics. So the correct answer here, and pause the video now if you don't want me to tell you, but the correct answer here is choice B. It's misreading of mRNA and an inhibition of the initiation complex. And the reason is because in this question, the patient was treated with an aminoglycoside, okay? So that's the mechanism of aminoglycosides and classic adverse drug reactions for aminoglycosides include both nephrotoxicity and neuromuscular blockade. So in order to have gotten this question right, you could have either just known the mechanism of the aminoglycosides or 
you could have eliminated A, C, D, and E. And in the alternate scenario, let's say, for example, you're taking your test and you really don't know the mechanism of aminoglycosides, but you know some of the mechanisms and some of the adverse drug reactions of the other antibiotics. Then from the high yield line of thinking, and if you're going to take this question from the lens of somebody who's like an, an investigator who's trying to crack the code and figure out how you do well on USMLE and Comlex, you can actually write down on your little whiteboard that you're taking when you take your exam what A, C, D, and E all represent in terms of the antibiotics, and you can work backwards. So let's approach the question that way, and I'll prove to you why A, C, D, and E are incorrect, and we can also use this as a great example as a way to eliminate wrong answers. So if we fill in what the different antibiotics are from A to E, this is what we get. So inhibition of bacterial dihydrofolate reductase is the mechanism of trimethoprim, also known as TMP. Choice C, inhibition of the attachment of aminoacyl tRNA, well, that's the mechanism of your tetracyclines. Choice D, inhibition of the 50S peptidyl transferase is the mechanism for chloramphenicol. And choice E, inhibition of protein synthesis via blocked translocation is the mechanism for your macrolides. So we filled all that in now, and now let's go through each of these antibiotics one at, the time, one at a time and ask ourselves what type of adverse drug reactions would we expect to see in either the labs or the vignette if the test writer wanted us to pick that answer. So for choice A, trimethoprim, the classic adverse drug reactions are megaloblastic anemia, leukopenia, and granulocytopenia. And the question right now is, do you see evidence of these adverse drug reactions in the vignette or on the labs? Now, in the case of TMP, it's mostly lab-based, and I don't really see evidence for any of this stuff. So therefore, choice A is incorrect. It's not trimethoprim, which means it's not the inhibition of bacterial dihydrofolate reductase. So even if you didn't know that choice B was the right answer, you could eliminate choice A because there's no evidence for any of those laboratory abnormalities. Because you already know that B is the correct answer, let's skip down to choice C. So for choice C, the inhibition of the attachment of aminoacyl tRNA is the mechanism for tetracyclines. So now the question is, is, if we're working backwards or trying to solve this question like someone who's a high yield exam test taker, what are the adverse drug reactions of the tetracyclines that you'd expect to see? Well, the classic adverse drug reactions are photosensitivity, which we don't see evidence of in the vignette, discoloration of teeth, which we don't see evidence of in the vignette, inhibition of bone growth, which we don't see evidence of in the vignette, and GI distress, which we don't see evidence of in the vignette. There's no laboratory abnormality to point us in the direction of tetracyclines. There's nothing in the question in the vignette to suggest that the mechanism or that the antibiotic was tetracyclines. So therefore, we can effectively eliminate choice C if we only know stuff about tetracyclines when we're taking this question. So the inhibition of attachment of aminoacyl tRNA is not the correct answer. So we eliminate choice C. Let's go down to talk about choice D. So choice D is inhibition of the 50S peptidyl transferase. And this is the mechanism of chloramphenicol. Now, classically, chloramphenicol has three side effects that you should know. One is a dose-dependent anemia. Two is an aplastic anemia. And three is the very, very high-yield gray baby syndrome. Now, clearly, there's nothing in this question about gray baby syndrome, so we can write that one off. And for anemia and aplastic anemia, there's really nothing in our labs here to suggest that either one of those processes are going on. Now, I could see some really nitpicky, nerdy student going for the 300 on USMLE arguing to me that the hemoglobin in this question is a little bit low. And technically, it's on the lower side of normal. But because the patient's age was not given to us, it's not going to be there's, there's not going to be anemia here. And the other thing is, is that on your exams, if they want you to pick anemia, they're going to give you an obvious anemia. They're going to give you a hemoglobin of like six, seven, or eight. They're not going to give you one in the range of like chronic inflammation, somewhere between 10 and 12. 
No, no, no. They're going to give you something that is screaming anemia at you. So, you know, part of USMLE and Comlex, especially on level one and step one, is that it really can't be a vague question. There has to be an undisputed answer choice. So they're not going to give you the border, the borderline lab values. They're going to give you absolutes. So if they wanted you to recognize anemia, you would see a hemoglobin of like 6.5. So don't worry about these borderline lab values and don't overthink these questions. Part of developing this high yield line of thinking is asking yourself when you don't know something, what would the question writer put in the question or put in the labs if they wanted me to pick this answer? So because none of this is here, choice D, inhibition of the 50S peptidyl transferase is clearly not the correct answer, so we're going to eliminate that. Let's jump down to our last option here, choice E. So choice E is macrolides, and the mechanism is inhibition of protein synthesis via blocked translocation. The classic side effects of macrolides are eosinophilia, and this question tells you that the eosinophils are normal, so that's, that's out. QTC prolongation, there's no evidence of arrhythmia in the vignette and cholestatic hepatitis. And even though I didn't give you a full printout of all of the labs associated with a cholestatic pattern of hepatitis, the AST and the ALT are normal, which effectively tells you there's nothing going on in the liver here. Additionally, if there was anything going on in an organ, you would see evidence of a more chronic anemia. You would see evidence of probably a white blood cell count being a little bit elevated, but everything is mostly normal here. So clearly it's not macrolide. So we can write that off inhibition of protein synthesis via block translocation is incorrect. So again, the point of this exercise is to go through these answer choices one at a time and pair the antibiotic to their mechanism and then pause for a second and reflect. And when we reflect, we ask ourselves if they wanted us to pick something like TMP, like tetracyclines, like chloramphenicol, like macrolides, what adverse drug reactions might we expect to see in the question to make us you know, think about that antibiotic and then correlate that to the mechanism. So that's the point of this question. So the high yield bottom line is know your antibiotic mechanisms and know their adverse drug reactions. And because there's so many, I had to put this on two slides. So what I want you to do is if, you, if you're looking for the quick and dirty review, pause this video right now. This is the first of two slides showing a summary of these antibiotics. And if you are now resuming the video, here's the second page. Um, more antibiotic mechanisms and adverse drug reactions, just really be able to tie the mechanisms and ADRs together because it's a really classic test question. It's going to show up whether in a question bank, on a practice test, or even on the real deal. So I want you to be confident when you tackle questions about pharmacology because if you spend a little bit of time memorizing them, they're free points. Once again, here's page one of two of the high yield bottom line when it comes to your antibiotics. And moving on, here's page two of two. If you'd like to pause the video and just study a bit, this is organized for your studying pleasure. But that is my high yield video question bank practice question number six on antibiotics.